Good afternoon, everyone. It's good to see you. Welcome to Crime 2 News at Noon. I'm Nicole Hernandez. Laura Papetti has the day off. Now, before we get to the news of the day, we do want to start with weather with our meteorologist Thomas Patrick, because Thomas, you were tracking uh, some moisture in our region, but it doesn't look like it's reaching us, right? Yeah, just, just a little bit of moisture. I did see a quick sprinkle with a couple hours ago, but even that has seemed to have passed through. And Doppler radar agrees because it showed this little band of precip passing by Coeur d'Alene, and it's now just kind of fizzling over the North Idaho Mountains. Better yet, the sun is trying to peek behind the clouds behind me. It's going to struggle. It'll be mostly cloudy to overcast for today, uh, but we're in a dry pocket for now. There's another band of moisture that's just crossing the Cascades. It's the eastern slopes that are definitely going to get perhaps a couple inches of snow, even from about Wenatchee and westward. By the time it gets into central and eastern Washington, it's going to be back to rainfall because our temperatures have recovered already by the noon hour. 43 in Moses Lake, 37 in Spokane. So any precipitation that would fall now would just fall as rainfall by this point. This is an overall mild pattern to finish out the year here. So as we get closer towards New Year's Eve and New Year's Day, we are trending slightly above average and we'll show you what that means for our fireworks forecast for New Year's Eve all in just a few moments. Spokane will be swearing in its next mayor later this afternoon. Crime 2's Brandon T. Jones is at City Hall telling us when and what's happening at the ceremony. Yeah, well, that swearing in ceremony will take place just a short walk here from City Hall over at the downtown library. And five days from now, that's when Lisa Brown's official tenure will we begin here in the city of Spokane. So she won that election back in November in what turned out to be a, a highly contested race. She defeated current Mayor Nadine Woodward by 2,853 votes. And as Brown prepares for his prepares for office, she's already announced five transitional committees to help navigate her top priorities. That includes public safety, criminal justice, health and housing options, the regional economy and the city's budget and sustainability. I want this to be everything from we need to do this now, <laughs> very action oriented to here's where we're headed. So another task to be addressed as Brown enters office will be finding a replacement for Spokane Police Chief Craig Meidel, who announced his resignation a month ago. Brown says she'll be conducting a national search to find his replacement. And speaking of that ceremony tonight, that'll begin around 5.30 p.m. and run until about 7 p.m. Again, that's going to be at the downtown Spokane Public Library. And then also the Spokane Public Library's YouTube channel will be streaming the event online. But for now, reporting right outside of City Hall, Brandon T. Jones, Crim 2 News. So as we get ready for this leadership transition, Mayor Nadine Woodward posted a message online yesterday thanking the city for the opportunity to serve as mayor. Now, Spokane is tr transitioning, and with change comes uneasiness. My focus these past few weeks has been on doing my part to make the transition as smooth as possible for the 2,400 employees who deliver city services at a high level each and every day. Mayor Woodward said serving as mayor was the honor of a lifetime. She has not shared what she's planning on doing next. Almost 40 years after he killed Ruby Doss, a judge found Richard Aguirre guilty of first degree murder. The judge said prosecutors proved he killed 27 year old Doss on January 30th, 1986. Aguirre sat trial for this same case back in 2021, but that ended as a mistrial. Crem 2 was in the courtroom yesterday when the judge read his verdict. The court finds Mr. Aguirre guilty of the crime of murder in the first degree as charged in count one. Aguirre was escorted out of the courtroom in handcuffs. Afterwards, we talked to his defense about the decision. I believe in Mr. Aguirre's innocence and we will continue to fight for that. His family has invested eight years defending him. Aguirre's defense attorney says she is looking into appealing the decision now. We did try to talk to the prosecutors, but they left the courtroom as soon as the judge read the verdict. Aguirre's sentencing is set for February 5th at 8.30 in the morning. Well, there's been a record number of eagles over Lake Coeur d'Alene this year. This is an amazing picture right here. Our news partners at the Coeur d'Alene Press say the Bureau of Land Management saw over 400 eagles just on December 20th alone. That's just smashed records they made the week before. Biologists say there's more eagles because of the mild weather and lots of fish this year. If you want to see them, though, head out there soon. The eagles are getting ready to start their migration south. 
they'll head to the Snake River Basin and Utah.